Hello everybody, my name is Carly Tate and I am the chair of Represent, which is Co-op's Disability Network. And I'm joined today by Katie, who is also a member of the Represent team. Thanks, Carly. Um, so who I represent? Um, represent is the Co-op's new colleague network for disabled people. This network was established by a small team of us in 2020 and formally launched to the business in February 2021. And this is really about creating a space for disabled people to feel like they have somewhere to go, to share experiences, to have a voice and support each other, but also to drive positive change. The network also welcomes non-disabled allies, of which I am one, as my eldest son Sam has a disability um, and I'm passionate about creating a level playing field for him and for others. So the first question um, that a lot of people ask us is, is why do we assist? Why has Co-op got a disability network? And there's a number of reasons, but ultimately we live in a society which lacks fair representation for disabled people. As a group of individuals, we are less likely to be in employment. We're more likely to experience poverty due to the high living costs. And we are more likely to be victims of crime. And our experiences are not accurately portrayed in the media. And when we look at why that is, the, the overriding reason really stems from systemic barriers and uh, poor attitudes. So there is a real lack of empathy and understanding around disability and what that actually means. And history has a way of showing us that we fear what we don't understand and we ignore what doesn't affect us. And therefore, disability is often an isolating experience. And so when you connect with others, it helps drive inclusion. So there have been many considerations along the journey and, and setting the network up was complex at times and continues to be. There are lots of different things that we could have chosen to focus on. So being clear about our purpose was really important. And of course, to be clear about our purpose, we had to understand what our colleagues needed the most. Driving sustainable change meant engaging with a number of different teams across the business. And actually, we are a really, really small group of volunteers doing this at the side of a very busy day job. So we understood right from the word go that we had to create a pull from the organisation to really generate momentum. So as you've seen in that last slide, there was a lot of overlap in terms of, of, of what we actually needed to discover, what we needed to do, and therefore we needed a plan and a focus which helped us to prioritise workload and pinpoint resource. But more importantly, we needed to understand as a collective what our purpose is and what it isn't. And so we set about creating um, a agile approach to our overall vision and mission. And we did a workshop and stripped away a lot of the hierarchy to enable members of Represent and other disabled people to, to feed in their thoughts on what a network should do. And given everybody this opportunity helped us to identify key themes that we, we ultimately built into our strategic framework. So along the top, you can see that we've, we've really identified our vision, which is that we are an inclusive environment for disabled people. And that for us means celebrating difference, removing physical and attitudinal barriers and providing support and opportunities. And then from that, we've obviously identified four key pillars, which are connecting with colleagues, so building that community, awareness and education, policy and processes, and colleague personal development. So that is actually quite a lot of work. And we then started to look 
actually, what is it that we should be delivering? And what is it that we should be empowering others to drive forward themselves? And so that's why, in terms of delivery, we've chosen it to be very much based on that people first network of driving that community and really being there and supporting one another, as well as offering awareness and education. And then consulting on things like policy and processes. So there has been a lot of learning along the way. I just want to share a few of those with you today. Firstly, um, setting up a network isn't a linear process, and actually that's absolutely right. To be successful, you have to be willing to lean, listen, lean in, change and adapt. We chose to shape the network organically as we took time to learn, to grow and understand our colleague needs. Secondly, the power of storytelling. So as a group, we spent a lot of time over the last few months telling our own personal stories to different teams across the business. And we've received some really amazing feedback. Now that's empowering from two perspectives. Firstly, it's empowering for those colleagues who've taken that decision to bravely tell their stories, often for the first time. But actually also it's empowered others to drive change. So we've seen teams listen to our stories and be so uh, engaged and kind of, um, you know, overawed by the stories that we've told um, and, and, and really moved by some of those experiences. So that's compelled them to go away and to really grasp the nettle and drive action in areas that they've got influence over. And that's brilliant to see. Then in terms of our network goals, that split between consult and deliver that Carly mentioned earlier has really helped us to make the best use of the really kind of scarce resources we've got within our network, but also to be clear with other teams about our expectations and needs of them. And lastly, this goes without saying, but no matter where we all are on our personal journeys and where any organisation is on its journey, there is always more that we can do. There's always that next step to take. Thank you, Katie. So that concludes um, that concludes our presentation today, and we really hope that you enjoyed listening. Thank you very much. Bye.